Angela Dananjana Shalakaya Chatsuran Militanyena Tesmai Shri Gurave Namaha Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Koravani Precharine Nirvishesha Shanyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Vanchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavane Bio Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Welcome everyone to our Bhakti Shastri course. We're studying Bhagavad Gita and we're, yesterday we completed chapter 13, so today we'll be going into chapter 14. I just wanted to check, I, I forwarded a mind map of chapter 13 to our class coordinator. Did he forward it to everyone? Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Okay. And did you also receive anything else? I, I sent him an article about cultivating the mode of goodness by Burijan Prabhu. Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. You've received it? Okay, good. And there was one more thing also. I sent a quote which we'll be looking at today, this evening. I don't know if you received it. Okay. So very good. Just want to keep you up. Now we have a PowerPoint today. So uh, should we sh share the screen, Prabhu? Yes, please, Maharaj. You are already allowed. I'm allowed to share the screen, huh? Okay. Uh, share screen. Right? Okay. Uh, can you see it? Yes, we can see. I can see it. Yes. You're all okay? Okay. Yes, Maharaj, but it is not full uh, view. Screen. Full screen. Yeah. yeah, it's not yet, Maharaj. Still. Right. I've got to put it in full screen, right? Now, now, how was it? Now it's fine, Maharaj. Okay, so we'll just quickly overview chapter 13. We spoke about the Shetra and the Shetragna in the first seven verses, right? Shetra meaning? Shetra means the, the field, the field of activities. In other words, the body and Shetragna, the knower of the field. And there are two Shetragnas, there's the soul and the super soul. Then verses 8 to 12 describe the process of knowledge. And we heard the most important item being constant and unallied devotional service. And there are many other items there also, like approaching the spiritual master, humility, pridelessness, non-violence, absence of false ego, these different things. One should know that there were 20 items listed. We should know at least 10 of them. But then the object of knowledge, oh, okay. The object of knowledge, geyam, the object of knowledge. The object of knowledge was to know the soul and the super soul. And those, the soul was described and then the super soul was described and we spoke about the relationship between the two. So then we went on to discuss Prakriti, Purush and their union. Prakriti meaning nature and Purusha the living entity and their union. 
And we heard about how the living entity is in the association of the material nature. And we're going to look at it more tonight. The connection between chapter 13 and chapter 14 comes in this section, in this section between, where the Prakriti and Purusha were discussed. Right? The, the living entity in contact with the material nature meets with good and evil due to his association with the modes of nature. Purusha prakriti stohi bhunte prakriti jan guna karanam guna sangasya sadasad yoni janmashu. Right? The important verse, the key verse between chapter 13 and 14 that the living entity is meeting with different conditions, good and bad, uh, due to his association with the modes of nature. So then the final section of the chapter, Jnana Chakshush, the vision of knowledge. And remember there was a nice example at the end of the chapter, we heard about how the, uh, the soul doesn't mix with the body just as air doesn't mix with anything. Although air is everywhere in, and in everything, still it doesn't mix with anything. And so Krishna, Lord Krishna compares the soul to the air, just as the air, or he, sometimes they use the word sky, does not mix with anything. So the soul, although within the body, does not mix with anything. And then the second example given by Lord Krishna was, just as there's one sun in the sky illuminating everything, so the one soul in the body spreads consciousness throughout the body. So those were two nice examples which come in the end of the 13th chapter. It's a, an important chapter in the Bhagavad Gita. And it's not one of the easiest chapters. We need to read it several times and become familiar with it. All right, so we're going to go ahead from chapter 13, we'll go into chapter 14. And chapter 14 is entitled The Modes of Nature. And we're, here, we're going to hear, we hear first of all, the first section, Krishna as the seed-giving father of all beings. Right? I'm sure uh, Gita Indole Kamaraji knows this verse, right? About Krishna as the seed giving father. Yes, Maharaj. Right. Aham Bija Prada Pita. Aham Bija. Bija the seed and Pita the father. So Krishna says, Aham, I am, he is the seed giving father of all beings, right? Interesting. Conditioning, the book here about the conditioning, the characteristics, action and death in the modes. It's the bulk of the chapter. And then the end of the chapter, Arjuna will ask some questions and we'll hear about how we can transcend the modes. So these are the three sections in chapter 14. All right, we'll look first of all at the connection between the two. Here's a quote from Prabhupada. Will mm. I some one of the devotees can read for us? Dina what's up, Prabhu? You wanna read? It has also been explained that it is due to association with the modes of nature that the living entity is entangled in this material world. Now in this chapter the Supreme Personality explains what those modes of nature are how they act, how they bind, and how they give liberation. 14.1 Thank you. So, 
due to association with the modes of nature we're entangled in the material world, right? The modes of nature, they're described as gunas, gunas meaning ropes. So we're tied, entangled in these modes, and we're going to hear how they act, how they bind, and how they give liberation, how we, how we can get liberation. Right? Quoting the, the verse, the key verse from 13th chapter, Purusha prakriti stohi, and then bhunte prakriti janguna. The, right? The 1322. The living entity in the prakriti, he's enjoying through his, through, uh, he's enjoying according to his nature the different modes. Right? Somebody's enjoying the mode of goodness. Somebody's enjoying passion, somebody's enjoying ignorance. Different living entities, they each have their different natures, and according to their nature, they're situated in a particular mode, and, and in this way, they think they're enjoying. They're actually happy. The example was given about when Indra was cursed to become a pig, that in the body of the pig, he was happy. He was enjoying. He didn't want to leave. So this is the nature. This is how the material nature covers, how it binds us. Hmm? We're enjoying these different modes. And we have to understand how entangling these modes of nature are. And it's not so easy to get free. The second half of the verse, Karanam gunasangosya Sat asat yoni janmashu, right? Karana, the cause and the sangha association. Because of the association, we get good and bad in many and different births. So this is a way of material life. This is our entanglement in the modes. From the Bhagavad Gita, the fifth verse, Sadvam Rajas Tama Iti Guna Prakriti Sambhavaha. Material nature consists of three modes goodness, passion, and ignorance. Dibadnanti Mahabaho Dehi Dehinam Avyayam. When the eternal living entity comes in contact with nature, O mighty armed Arjuna, he becomes conditioned by these modes. Nipatnanti means conditioned, right? There's, there are conditioned souls and there are liberated souls. So we, we, are, we become conditioned by the material nature. And that material nature is of three colors, the goodness, the passion, and the ignorance. So, <laughs> Lord Krishna is explaining to Arjuna how the living entity becomes. <laughs> Lord Krishna is explaining to Arjuna how we become conditioned, how we become entangled in these modes. Very difficult situation. So, we have a little exercise for you. Uh, who's there? Yagna, Yagna, Yagna Dinesh Prabhu, are you there? Yes, yes, Maharaj, I'm there. Oh, all right. So, how many students? Huh? Yes, 50 students are there, Maharaj, 50 students. 50 students, huh? my goodness. Oh. Okay. So, uh, how will we do this? It's a lot of people to have in a group. <laughs> yes, yes, Maharaj. Yeah. Uh, we, can, uh, we can create five uh, group maybe Maharaj, uh -huh. and each. It's a lot of people to engage in a group though. Five groups and you have about ten people in each group. Is mm. Maybe we'll just go over it together. And we'll take answers as we go on, because, because it's, it's very difficult with so many people to make 
groups. The groups are quite big. All right, so let's begin with the mode of goodness. Do you all have your texts with you? You have a Bhagavad Gita there with you? Have yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Yes. yes, Maharaj. All right. Okay, so we're going to talk first of all about the mode of goodness. We want to know how does it condition the living entity? What is the conditioning of the mode of goodness? Tell me, it's described in text 6 to 10, how the different modes condition. We would like to hear, you can put your hand up if you'd like to volunteer, the, how the mode of goodness conditions the living entity. What's the effect of the mode of goodness? Alright. Okay, Gita and Zulika Mataji. Hare Krishna Sanvat Pranam. Uh, uh, one becomes in mode of uh, goodness condition by uh, knowledge because uh, the living entity thinks that he is advanced in knowledge than others and uh, he becomes uh, satisfied in that and he the taste of knowledge gives him such satisfaction that he thinks more advanced and uh, Prabhupada has given examples in the purport of scientists, philosophers, poets. So they become so conditioned that they have to uh, again take birth again. It's the cycle of birth that they have to rotate because they are also religioned by material energy because they think that uh, such of that such life is very good. They are uh -huh. so much conditioned by this. Yes. Uh -huh. They become proud of their knowledge. Uh -huh. Thank you, Ita and Duleka. Would anyone else like to add anything onto this about the mode of goodness and how it conditions? Other people would raise their hand. Did they want to say, yes? Archana? Yes, sir. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Pranam Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, the one who is in uh, the mode of uh, goodness, uh, who is associated with the mode of goodness, uh, he has knowledge, so he feels, uh, and he since uh, he is able to, because of knowledge, he is able to understand things. There is happiness; he gets happiness out of it, and uh, there is a feeling of satisfaction, and uh, and uh, and he thinks that is the that is what is the end of things, and he is attached to it. So that is the uh, issue with uh, the uh, attachment to mode of goodness. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, and. Dina Vatsala also has a hand raised. Yes, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Yes. Yes, Prabhupada, please continue. Sarayam, Dalasipatamaita. Who is in the mode of goodness? They were, they will become more uh, wisdom, having more wisdom than another person. And they attached by that. Okay. All right. We want to go on. I want to go on. We want to hear about the characters, characteristics, and symptoms of someone in the mode of goodness. What about their characteristics and symptoms? Described in text 11 to 13. Okay. So you say he think he will he will think he's better than others. Yes, he has. He has. Uh, I mean, because of this nature of his, he's attracted to this type of work, um, and uh, and he would not uh, get into 
You say his, you say his type of work. What work does he do? As activities like, uh, um, say, he, he would be inclined towards uh, donations, inclined towards helping others. Well, he, that's, he's not going to do that much, is it? I mean, maybe now and again you give, but that's not generally just simply the work of someone. What, what work does somebody in the mode of goodness do? Teaching. In the practice of teaching. Okay. What what will he teach? Can he teach anything? The mode, mode of goodness, he would be teaching what the scriptures are saying. Oh, you teach the scriptures. What about Dronacharya? He was a Brahman. He was a Brahmana, but he knew the art of uh, warfare. Warfare for righteous purposes. So he would be teaching that. So is that the work of a Brahman? The teaching, teaching itself is a work of a Brahman. Right. But yes, you're correct. He, yes, you're right. Learning as well as imparting. <laughs> Very good, right. Teaching. It's a duty of the Brahman to teach. Right. Whatever he knows, he teaches. And Dronacharya knew warfare, he taught it. Good. Okay. Very, very good. Thank you. Okay, what about destination of death? Somebody in the mode of goodness. I want an example. I want an example. How will they die in the mode of goodness? Hare Krishna, Tanmay Pranam Maharaj. They will, uh, when they will die, they will attain to the higher planets of the great sages. Yada Satsaya Pravedya Tu Pralaya Vrihasti Dev. All right, I want to know what, sit, what, what, tell me about how they die in the mode of goodness. When they will die, they will go to higher, uh, they can go to higher planetary systems like Jando, Mahalo. You're telling me where they're going to go. I want to know how they're going to die. They will, uh, they will die, then they will remember, uh, remember Krishna or uh, uh, they will be among devotees uh, when they will leave their bodies. Everybody in the mode of goodness has to be among devotees. Because Give me an example. Somebody dies in the mode of goodness. Okay, that was an auspicious time to leave the body, described in 8th chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Any other situation? Leaving the body, auspicious, more to goodness? Hare Krishna Prabhuji, is there, um, I'm not, not sure, but I'll just try. The prana leaves in from a particular uh, part of the body, uh, like the uh, upper part of the body. The prana, can, for the great yogi, it will go out the top of the head. Yes, yes, Maharaj. That's a very rare thing. That, that is a great transcendentalist. He can drive the soul yeah, out not through. In the lower. It can go through the throat, through the mouth, and something like that. That doesn't indicate anything. How I wanted to know more about about the mode of dying in the mode of goodness. What kind of circumstance? What kind of situation you'd have to be in? Yeah, you could be somebody could be in meditation. They could be sitting in some in, in meditation. <laughs> dying peacefully. Prabhupada laughed about that. He said, that's a joke, dying peacefully. <laughs> it doesn't happen. But some rare souls, yeah, they can be maybe surrounded by devotees chanting the holy name. They can go to a holy place, give up the body. Many people, they go to Benares or they go to Hardwar. You have Ajamila. He went to Hardwar, gave up his body on the bank of the Ganga there in Hardwar. All right. 
What about actions in the mode of goodness? What's the result of action in the mode of goodness? Described in text 16 to 18, check in your book, actions in the mode of goodness, what's the result? The result of his actions is pure, because uh, he is in the good mode of goodness, and actions uh, he performs, the result of his pious actions is pure. He performs pious activities in the service of the Lord, or even if he is uh, not a big devotee, he is uh, something, doing something pious activities. Um, uh, like maybe he uh, of some he's uh, of some hospitals opening of hospital schools or something, but if his devotee, if his mode of goodness, uh, then his actions are biased. So what result does he get? Results, results. The result is uh, his knowledge will develop from this. Oh, he will develop knowledge. Have, uh, yes, knowledge develops from it. All right, we'll go ahead. Let's go to the mode of passion. How does the mode of passion condition a person? Can I answer? No, you've already done enough. Let somebody else have a chance. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Yes, Hare Krishna. In the mode of passion, some a person has a lot of desires. They just want a lot of things. They have unlimited desires. All right, unlimited desires. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna, uh, Maharaj. Maharaj, in the uh, mode of passion, uh, while uh, there are desires, there will be fruitive actions also. And there will be results of fruitive actions. One will be bound by these results of fruitive actions. Yeah, we want to know how the mode of passion conditions a person. By the, by the results, uh, the fruit of actions. Okay. Valmiki Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble blessings. I'll go to Shlok Prabhupada. What I got in my mind is so, when he's someone in a passion, yeah. so he's yeah. never, never satisfied. He, he wants more and more. So okay. No satisfaction. Okay, that's more like symptoms and characteristics. You're not actually giving con the condition of one in the mode of passion. The conditioning, how it conditions a person. They work very hard all day and night. They have no time for anything else, only thinking how to make money. The mode of passion. Great oh, endeavor, yeah. intense endeavor. Yeah. No time for Shastra. <laughs> so, many, so many things to so, do. What about the characteristics and symptoms? Somebody in the mode of passion, 11 to 13. Ma 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 yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my obeisances. Um, um, I was just about to say the, um, it's characterized by the attraction between male and female and the hanker, constant hankering for material enjoyment, family life, house, home, hard work like the Mudas. Um, they have no goal except to continuously work hard and acquire more and more and power and prestige and honor in this world. Yes. But they have no understanding of the destination of the goal of life. Okay, very good. Thank you. What about one who dies in the mode of destination at death? from the mode of passion. Where are they going to go? Ganga Prasad. Ganga Prasad Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj, obeisance at your lotus seat. When one dies in the mode of passion, it takes place in the animal kingdom. No. Not right. Read the text. That's the text but among those engaged in fruitive activities. All right. Yes. Where is that? 
Where, where are you going to take birth? Where are people engaged in fruitive activities? Where do you need to go? In the mercantile homes. Huh? What's that? Ganga Prasad not can tell. Can, can somebody give an example of death in the mode of passion? Asim Krishna Prabhu. Yes, Maharaj Sri, in the Lord Pranam. Uh, a person who died in mode of passion, we can say that he takes birth in the family of uh, people who are engaged in repetitive desires, uh, earning money and all these things, uh, not material prosperity, who are bothered about only material prosperity. They take birth here. So can you tell me, give me an example of death in the mode of passion? Generally most of the people die in this mode of passion who are not lazy but who are who want to at the death also thinking of the business on the things which dies. I'm not very clear about what you mean. You mean people people who Engaged in business, are going to die in the mode of passion. Whoever his desires in him left for sense gratification or enjoying senses, he will die in the mode of passion. Well, some people very much involved in the mode of in sense gratification, they die in the mode of ignorance. But he, he, he should also be not. Uh, Committing sinful activity, we follow the shastras, the fruitive actions which are described in the Vedas. Anybody else like to give me an example? Death in the mode of passion? Sarup Krishna Prabhu. I was thinking, Maharaj, uh, um, who would be dying in the mode of uh, passion? Um, maybe if. Uh, Dronacharya, Dronacharya himself died uh, talking about his son. No, no, he died in Samadhi. I would think death in the mode of passion, maybe somebody's in a, a racing car or driving a car very fast and they crash the car. Somebody's very, you know, sometimes people get very angry and passionate, they're driving the car, they go so fast and they crash the car, they die. And somebody else, they're very attached to their money and they see the stock market crash, they see, oh, they've lost all their money and they, they have a heart attack, they die. Many people have heart attacks, you know, heart attacks because of the attachment, they're so worried about their money and everything. So they have a heart attack, they lose all, you know, they die. That's death in the mode of passion. What about results of actions in the mode of passion? What's the result of ac action in the mode of passion? What does Bhagavad Gita say? Just tell me what it says in Bhagavad Gita. What does Krishna say in Bhagavad Gita? The result of action in the mode of passion. One word. Yes, action in the mode of passion. What's the result? One word. Are there any hands? Are there any hands? Yeah? Misery. Misery. Thank you. Yes. Everyone note that. The result of action in the mode of passion. Misery. A lot of misery is there in the mode of passion. <laughs> people, you know, the mode of passion is very attractive to people these days. Prabhupada writes in the purport, he said, in the past the mode of goodness was attractive. But nowadays, you know, if you look at the advertisements, the commercials, they, they, use, every, they use the word passion. You know, it's so appealing to people, oh, it grabs their mind, oh, passion, 
yeah, I, I, I was coming through a, an airport and I noticed there was a restaurant and they had big writings on the window of the restaurant, come and taste the passion. <laughs> come and taste the passion. And then uh, there was, an, there was a, a, a commercial for a motor car and they were saying, feel the passion, get behind the wheel and feel the passion. You know, people, uh, they want this passion. They don't know the result of passion is misery. And it's not very auspicious, it's not very good thing. You have to be very cautious not to be attracted by that passionate nature. All right, we'll go on to the mode of ignorance. How does it condition? Roshan Pradhan Prabhu. Uh, Guruji, or Maharaj Ji, uh -huh. word of passion is, uh, first also it is quite uh, miserable and after its result is also miserable. And now we're on the mode of ignorance, we're on Tamagun, we want to know how the mode of ignorance conditions. Like uh, before is also before, its action are also not good, like Staying, staying uh, uh, not sleeping at night, uh, sleep, sleeping in daytime, and its result is also quite good, like taking alcohol. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you're right. Yeah. But I, I'm more interested in what the Bhagavad Gita has to say. You're giving your own realizations, your own examples, they're good. But I'd like to know what Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita. Lord Krishna describes the conditioning of the modes. And in verses 6 to 10, he describes how the different modes condition. Now I'm asking you, how does the mode of ignorance condition the living entity? Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, the mode of ignorance uh, bind uh, someone by madness, indolence and sleeping. Yes, thank you Mataji, very good, yes. Madness, indolence. Prabhupada says, the mode of ignorance is the opposite to the mode of goodness, right? The mode of goodness is just the opposite to the mode of ignorance. Laziness, madness and sleeping and like that, but the mode of goodness is different. The mode of ignorance, you know, they're morose, miserable as well. But the mode of goodness, one is happy, and one is in knowledge, one is not ignorant. So they're the opposite. And what about the symptoms and characteristics of someone in the mode of ignorance? Yes? Verses 11 to 13. Can you tell me something more about the characteristics of somebody in the mode of ignorance? Okay. All right. Does, mm -hmm. not even endeavoring to do anything. Just uh -huh. Any symptoms you can think about the mode of okay, lazy, yeah? Yes? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, what about destination of death? Somebody in the mode of ignorance. Where do they go? Maharani Mataji. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, 
Krishna Maharaj, yes. Um, it, it says in the Gita that he can go down to the hellish planets or take part in the animal kingdom. All right, can you give me an example, Mataji, of a death in the mode of ignorance? Really? Um, oh, you mean, I thought from the scriptures. Okay, well, um, if someone is drinking, I mean, I've, I live in Ireland, so I have a lot of experience of this, of people who, who um, uh, had a lot of alcoholic problems, one of my neighbours, and, um, and he died alone in the street by himself. He was the father of one of my friends. So it was very sad and tragic, but uh, we have a lot of this problem here. He was drunk, so, huh? Yeah, yeah, we have a huge drink problem for many, many long years in this country. So yeah, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's an example I would think of, the death in the mode of ignorance. And also, the dr drug addicts. Drug addicts, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we have also a huge drug problem. We have some suicides. We have a lot of suicide here as well. So, we hear about it every day. Yeah, mode of ignorance. Yeah, these are all deaths in the mode of ignorance, right? Okay, so now I want to ask you, you know, maybe you can do a little introspection and think, you know, how, how much, and maybe you, maybe not you yourself, but maybe people around you, how much are they, in what way are they influenced by passion or ignorance? Can you think of some examples how the people around you are, or, or you yourself are influ sometimes we're influenced by passion and ignorance. Would, would someone like to reveal? Yeah? Gita Induleka, you can take part in this. Yes. One example is in myself is when we uh, so lazy, we are not uh, punctual. Maybe our sewa is not punctual. And my neighbor, they were dragged in bad association. Start from the uh, un, uh, un, undisciplined situation and not following the regulative principle. Okay. Example. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Good. Hare Krishna. Yes? Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj. So, uh, uh, I introspection for my life. Uh, maybe in my family, my, my parent is more in passion, mood passion, because uh, we have house, we have uh, everything, but uh, my parents uh, uh, teach me uh, to make more money, to to make more uh, uh, many things, so I can live in uh, good things like that. But uh, when I joined Krishna consciousness, my, my parents uh, asked me, why you do this in this young age? Why you not go uh, for work, uh, in more work again? Because uh, I'm, I'm I'm working now, but my parents want me to work more uh, again like that. So uh, in my uh, friendship now, uh, my friendship in, uh, uh, not in, uh, but in Krishna consciousness, they, they want to, to make a more money like that. Thank you, Krishna. Mm. Okay. Your parents, the, Haribo, 
We have to, you know, people around, you please try to mute your mic if you're not going to take part in this. Don't have conversations while we're having this class. If you do, you want, you have to mute your mic. Yes, Krishna. Yes? Yes, you can continue. Okay. Yes, like that, uh, my parents and my friends, uh, they may be uh, more mood in passion. So, uh, actually, I, I track to passion too, because in this uh, young young age, uh, we think that we should uh, give give maximum capacity of ourselves. Uh, but in in uh, in, other, in another hand, I I join this podcast. I I uh, get association with uh, devotee. I think you should uh, more than more than this, more than just live in this material world. So. I try to, to engage myself to uh, to higher mood, I guess. <laughs> okay, thank you, Madhuji. Well, we'd like to hear from a man. Some some men like to talk, tell us about how much, the, in what way they're influenced by passion or ignorance. Hare Krishna Maharaj and our pranam, Hare Krishna Maharaj, Buddha pranam. I would like to give example from my personal life. I'm a worker and also some businessman. But sometimes I feel the power of ignorance uh, covers me, bind me so tightly. Because, and sometimes I feel some uh, some things makes me angry. That's the mode of uh, uh, passion. And so some argumentation with wife uh, or some people else maybe trigger my anger. But after some time, after I learn more in this Krishna consciousness, we can uh, slowly try to control the anger. And I also surrounded by uh, the people who were who were in business hospitality and some big person, big, big businessman. Sometimes we see them, they, uh, you know, like put so much emphasis in drinking, uh, drunken, you know, and smoking and saw us a little bit strange. We, they saw us, you know, like we cannot enjoy or join their party, eating meat and something like that, their material party drinking party, but we are not in that side, so they saw us like that, if that's my environment, so their life is full of, yeah, that, that is their life, that is their passion, that is their uh, doing, you know. that's my surrounding people, because I'm a businessman. Okay. Yeah. So he's a businessman surrounded by a lot of passion and ignorance, <laughs> yes. It's a great challenge. All right. Is there anybody else still like to contribute? In? Gita Induleka, I wanted to hear from you. Hare Krishna, Dhanu Maharaj. Maharaj, on uh, the whole uh, cosmetic in this industry and hotels, restaurants, malls, all these things, uh, cinemas, even mobile phone. These are all modes of passion because the children are busy and even everybody is busy whole day taking the phones and watching this, uh, uh, even television also. And uh, on a personal level, like it's winters to get up, uh, get ready by 4.30. So it's sometimes I don't like to get up so early and I just open my eyes, oh, I'm getting up, getting a propas. I say like this, I'm getting a propas, just give me five minutes more. <laughs> So that that I'm in mode of passion. I in the winter that many times happens to me, and uh, even uh, if someone provokes us, we get angry sometimes. But uh, now we have come to like we are in better position. We have we control very quickly. Like uh, we get upset from somebody says or something, but uh, it's for a few moments of time. Then we recover very quickly. Oh, okay. So some, sometimes you, you like to sleep more, that's the mode of ignorance, that's not the mode of passion. Yes, yes Maharaj, it's the mode of yes. <laughs> and sometimes... I have to sleep, I sleep late at night, so at night 
something happens, so I don't, yeah, I know it's more of a time I sleep. Mm-hmm. You sleep late at night? Why? Mm, I'm not targeted, I think, <laughs> because family does, so sometimes it happens really late after the class, like work and work, uh, like some duties, responsibilities. Okay. Not so late, but still, if not perfect, exactly like we should read Mangalati web or that it should be sharp or that. But we have, if I am getting a 15 minute late or 20 minutes or half a late, then it's late. Uh-huh. It happens. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So, certainly, it's very easy to be influenced by the mood of passion and ignorance. And we come to Krishna consciousness. We come out of the mode of passion and ignorance into the Krishna conscious environment. It's a big change. And we bring passion and ignorance with us. It's not easy to just shake it off. Right? But in order to actually establish ourselves in pure goodness, we have to get free of passion and ignorance. I would like to ask you, uh, how, what, what would you like to do, what do you feel you need to do to cultivate more the mode of goodness? How are you going to cultivate the mode of goodness? Actually, that's your essay topic for the open book assessment. It's a question number one. Right? Well, I, I remember because... No. This morning the devotee announced which essay you have to write for the open book assessment. So he said, question one in your st student handbook, the one which is about how, what, how to cultivate the mode of goodness. I think it's like that. It's about the modes of nature anyway. But it's the first question. So, I'm asking you now, you know, what, what could we do which will help us to cultivate more the mode of goodness? Have you any suggestions? Yes, so what I got in my mind, so wake, wake up, uh, waking up in the early morning, you know, go for Mangalarati. Prabhupada mentioned that uh, who is not going for Mangalarati, he is not waking up early. So he, it, it is not possible for him to uh, attain a good of, uh, mode of goodness. So that's one thing. Another thing that chanting Japa early, so morning time is uh, good for uh, good help for uh, bring us to the uh, mode of goodness and also if we if we are uh, not on that platform you know so we we can uh, associate with the voice in a uh, mode of goodness and and also cl uh, cl uh, cleanliness um, uh, also food in good uh, mode of goodness so so, uh, yeah, food. Yeah, I'd like to know about how w you're going to do this. You, you're saying what you would like to do, but what is your plan? Have you got any strategy? Have you got any, any ideas about how to do it? You know, yeah, we all know we should wake up early in the morning, but how to do it, you know? <laughs> Not easy. Yes, Maharaj. So, uh, I'm personally, I'm uh, getting strength from Shastra. I'm, uh, I'm uh, 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 reading uh, Prabhupada's books and, you know, this uh, helps me a lot. So, in this way. Okay. You read the Shastra, it's good. That could keep you awake at night. It means you won't wake up in the morning. <laughs> You spend, you stay up late all night reading, you don't get up in the morning. <laughs> it's a problem. It is not my case. After two or three hours, I'm completely done. So. Mm. 
All right. So anybody else like to offer a suggestion how you could cultivate the more goodness? Okay, very good, yes. yes. These are good points to cultivate the more goodness. Thank you, Maharaji. Anyone else like to offer some ways in which you could cultivate the more goodness? internally and externally so in the morning I wake up very early to chant and do uh, the next uh, sewa mangalati and so on and after that uh, externally I, I try to do good for life in my environment and also donating books Bhagavad Gita and teach also uh, teaching the important aspect in Bhagavad Gita. So that is what I have done for this time to make me more enthusiastic and also developing goodness. Well, that's what you're doing. These are your activities. You didn't really say what you're going to do to reduce the mode of passion and ignorance and come more to the mode of goodness. Of course, these are nice activities, these are all very nice activities, but still the influence of passion and ignorance will be there, we're still conditioned souls. I wanted to know how you could become more situated in the mode of goodness. You know, these activities are very fine, very nice, but how are you going to really situate yourself in the mode of goodness? association with pure devotees and also want to surrender myself maybe in the temple because I am already retired now from my work in my plan in the future I would like to stay in the temple and surrender myself why in the future if he's already retired why don't you go and stay in the temple Yeah, because Maharaj asked about the plan, that's my plan, he said so. Yeah, yeah. when? When are you going to do it? Yeah, step by step, step by step, so he's still preparing for that. We can spend our whole life preparing, you never do it. No matter what should I do, what can I do? Okay, I'm giving you the mercy. <laughs> yeah. Hare Krishna Hare Krishna. Alright, let's go ahead. 
let's see here, uh, the three modes of material nature. You can see here how they're compared to the different characteristics and uh, nature. First of all, mode of goodness, knowledge, right? We said the Brahmana is a symbol of the mode of goodness. Brahmana is meant to show these kind of qualities. Brahmanas have knowledge. That's why they're happy. They, have th they, have, they know things. They're better situated than other people. So they have that feeling of satisfaction and this happiness because they know. They have, they have some good education. Generally, Brahmanas have good knowledge and free from sins. By acting in the mode of goodness, then sinful reactions are destroyed. The mode of goodness, you perform uh, pure activities, but conditioned by a sense of happiness. There are problems being in the mode of goodness, right? The, what, what's the problem with being in the mode of goodness? Yes? Who's got their hand up? Uh, Rupraj, uh, Ram Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj. So the person thinks that um, I am very nicely situated and I am happy and I am having knowledge. So the desire for going back to Godhead reduces. Yeah, we become attached. We become attached to that situation. We never want to change. You know, they don't, they, they think, I already know everything. I don't need to hear anything from anyone. I already know. I'm a Brahmin. People are like that. They're thinking, I know, I know, I know all this. They become so attached to being in that condition. And the result is, they come back again. They don't get out. They come back, they take birth, they come back in the same condition. Prabhupada explains in the purport, in relation to this, he said that some people, they take birth again and again in the same condition. They come as a, as a poet or as a musician or as an artist. There was one famous uh, sitar, sitar player. His name was Ravi Shankar. This was in Srila Prabhupada's time. 1970s, he was very famous. So Ravi Shankar, is, he, was a, he was a world famous sitar player. It said he took birth nine times to play the sitar. Birth after birth he was coming as a sitar player. So some people like that, they become so attached to these particular activities, to music or poetry or painting, and they will come again and again. So that's the mode of goodness. And Prabhupada also taught scientists as well. There is something in the mode of goodness. They become very attached to their knowledge. And all right, then the mode of passion, born of unlimited desires and a lot of activity because they have many plans, many desires. So they have to be very busy. And they're really attached to the fruit. They're attached to enjoying the fruit. And that not only are they attached to the fruit, to the money, but when with the money they want to enjoy the opposite sex. So the attraction between the man and the woman, of course that is a symbol of passion. That attraction is there. A strong attachment, binding. And because of that attachment, then there's so much activity and so many desires. But the result of the mode of passion, misery. And then the, the mode of ignorance, tamagun, you can see the opposite from the mode of goodness. In the mode of goodness, there is knowledge. But in the mode of ignorance, simply madness. And, and there's no activity. People are just lazy and a lot of sleep and intoxication. 
so the three modes are described like this, different colors, sometimes we, we would describe them yellow, red and black or blue, like this, the modes of nature. Going ahead, okay, here's a quote from the third chapter, Bhagavad Gita, Prabhupada is explaining here. If therefore the mode of passion, instead of being degraded into the mode of ignorance, is elevated to the mode of goodness by the prescribed method of living and acting, then one can be saved from the degradation of wrath by spiritual attachment. All right, Prabhupada describes very clearly the mode of passion because the mode of passion, this whole planet is full of people in the mode of passion. Our earth planet is situated in the middle of the universe. At the top of the universe is more the mode of goodness and the bottom of the universe is the mode of ignorance. And here we are in the middle of the universe and we are in the mode of passion. Right? And cities in general are the mode of passion. The countryside is more the mode of goodness, people in the city in the mode of passion, and people in the, in the casino or in the liquor house, they're in the mode of ignorance. So the mode of passion, very prominent. And the problem is that from the mode of passion, that if it's not controlled, then it will degrade to the mode of ignorance, right? People start off in the mode of passion, they're very active, they work very hard, they make a lot of money, and then what do they do when they get the money? They get intoxicated, they use it to cultivate the mode of ignorance. So. It's, it's very dangerous. The mode of passion very easily transforms into the mode of ignorance. But Prabhupada is explaining that instead of going to the mode of ignorance, we can elevate ourselves to the mode of goodness. And Prabhupada explains how we can do it by the proper method of living and acting. Now, it doesn't mean you have to go and live in the temple. You can live at home, but you have to have the proper method of living and acting, right? You, when you're at home, you, we, we also have to cook, just like in the temple, we cook. So at home, you also cook, and whatever you cook, you offer. You offer to Krishna, right? We don't just cook and eat. But whatever we cook, we will offer to Krishna and take the prasad, take the prasad of the deity. This is the prescribed method of living and acting. And although we're living at home, we can also have kirtan regularly, be with the, the fa get the family together and have kirtan, chanting the holy name. If you're not going to have kirtan, at least you do japa together, you sit and chant, or you have a reading group. Nowadays, with the, with the situation, with this lockdown in many parts of the world, many people are taking advantage of the different methods of communication to make groups where they sit and read together. And they get people from different parts, different places, and they, and they come together and they read. They read the Bhagavad Gita and they discuss. Our devotees, our devotee, uh, one place which I go and preach is in Thailand. And so in Thailand we have a number of devotees there. They're actually not Thai, they're from Burma. And, and they're not really Burmese, but they're Nepali. They're Nepalis who came from Burma to Thailand and so they're locked down in Thailand and actually they're 
quite nice devotees, and many of them have already taken initiation. And they're doing their business there in Thailand, but just now there's no business. So they're meeting regularly on, on, the, uh, on Zoom, just like we're meeting on Zoom. So they also meet on Zoom. And the devotee told me yesterday how on Gita Jayanti, they spent five and a half hours to read the whole Bhagavad Gita, to recite the whole Bhagavad Gita. And for many of them, they'd never read it all before. It was the most wonderful thing. They'd never read the whole Bhagavad Gita before. Although they're Hindu, Nepali, but they'd never read the whole Bhagavad Gita before. And this, they actually did it on, the, on, on it was December 25th, the Gita Jayanti, the day Krishna spoke Bhagavad Gita, and they recited the whole Bhagavad Gita. And they, then after that, then they said, this is wonderful, we have to meet more regularly. And they started to meet regularly, and then they were discussing also, they said, you know, we have to have a program for our children. And then we started another group for the children, and get, now we've got a, groups going on with the children, different cities, different places, and they meet together and they discuss. So this way, the, by the use of technology, we were able to avoid degradation into the mode of ignorance. Instead, we were able to come up to the mode of goodness by the proper method of living and acting. Or, you might say, by the method of hearing and chanting, right? Living and acting, what we really talk about is hearing and chanting. And that hearing and chanting saves us from what Prabhupada describes here, the degradation of wrath, right? The degradation of wrath, wrath, anger. We become degraded by anger. Bhagavad Gita said, three gates to hell, lust, anger and greed. Anger comes due to frustration. Our material desires are not satisfied. We become angry. So we have to cultivate this spiritual attachment. Right? This is the attachment to the hearing and chanting, or to the, the method of living and acting. How to live as a devotee? How does a devotee act? This is important for us. Here's a nice verse from Srimad Bhagavatam. First canto, second chapter. Right? I think, I know Gita Indulekha knows this verse. Gita Indulekha. Yes, Maharaj. Shall I read? Yeah, go ahead. Sada Rajas Tamo Bhava Kaam Krod Lo Bhadish Gita Rese Narvitham Sitam Satve Prasidati Translation. Translation is not on the slide, Maharaj. You don't know this. You don't know the translation. I, know, I uh, it's like uh, because we have uh, we are in the when the Tamagund uh, and Rajaskun and uh, they are uh, the, uh, the, the result of this is calm and globe and uh, and we and when we are situated in the platform on the platform of uh, mode of goodness, then we will proceed it. Then we will be happy. We will become prasan uh, prasanatma. We will be happy. In that, in, when we are situated on the platform of order of good, goodness. Okay. This, this uh, stays water. Yes, first canto, chapter 7. Oh, second chapter, of course, second chapter, text 19. Okay, but quoted in Bhagavad Gita. As soon as irrevocable loving service is established in the heart, the effects of nature's modes of passion and ignorance, such as lust, desire and hankering disappear from the heart. Then the devotee is established in goodness and he becomes completely happy. Right? So we have to come, we have to get free from this passion and ignorance and the symptoms of the passion and ignorance are there, lust and desire and hankering. And once we get rid of them and become established in goodness, then we can actually uh, engage. Actually, Prabhupada say the verse is saying, 
when we do devotional service, then we get rid of the lust and hankering. It all goes away by devotional service. So we do the devotional service and we get rid of the, the lust from the heart. And that way, then we come to, the, to goodness. And from the mode of goodness, we can cultivate our love for Krishna. And here's the verse which is given in this chapter, right? I think it's an, a memorization verse, right? Arjuna asked the question in the 14th chapter, he asked actually three questions. He wanted to know what are the symptoms of one who has transcended the modes and then he wanted to know how does he act. Right? So he wanted to know what is the symptom. The symptoms, these are internal. So the first answer, the first question, Krishna d describes internal symptoms. Internal symptoms, the nature of his heart and his internal consciousness. And then it, what is his behavior? And Krishna do, goes on to describe the behavior of one who has transcended the modes. And Krishna talks about how he's equal to friend and enemy, and he sees a pebble, stone and gold, all the same. So this is behavior. So that was described. And then, Arjuna, the third question was, how do we transcend the modes? So this was the verse, which is spoken by Krishna, how to transcend the modes of nature. Bhakti mamchayo vayapicharena, bhakti yo vayapicharena, right? This, this bhakti, this devotion without falling down. Then you come to Brahma Bhuyaya Kaupati, come to the level of Brahman. One who engages in full devotional service, unfailing in all circumstances. This is avyapacharini bhakti. Right? Unfailing in all circumstances. So it's a high level bhakti. Then you transcend the modes of nature, come to the level of Brahman. Come to the level of Brahman means now you're able to actually serve Krishna. Because Krishna is Brahman. Krishna is his para-Brahman. He's the supreme Brahman. And if we want to do service for Krishna, we have to come to that level of Brahman. Prabhupada gives the example about how the servant of the king, he has to establish himself in the palace as a servant of the king in order to give nice service to the king. So the, same, the living entity has to come to the level of Brahman in order to serve Krishna. We cannot serve Krishna when we're in the mode of passion and ignorance. All right? Srila Prabhupada explains, this is a very important quote here, from a lecture Prabhupada gave in Los Angeles on the second chapter, how the quality of goodness will automatically be there. I'll just read it for you. This Krishna Consciousness Movement is directly offering the spiritual platform which is above the mode of goodness. The quality of goodness will automatically be there. Any person who is in Krishna Consciousness, his quality of goodness, namely, he does not indulge in illicit sex life, he does not smoke even, or take tea, or coffee even. He does not eat any forbidden foodstuff. Neither he takes part in unnecessary gambling. So good character is immediately there. Right? So this is Krishna consciousness movement. When we follow the process, we get the result. The, the result is quality of goodness will be there without, without trying for it. We just follow this process. The, the teachings, the instructions which Prabhupada has given us, and we're protected. So, 
in the 14th chapter, in the purport, verse 16, Prabhupada describes something of his modern mission. And you can see here at the top of the slide, save humanity from the greatest danger. Right? What's the dangers in human society? Prabhupada describes the dangers, the, the mode of ignorance. What are some of the terrible things which are going on in the world today? Cow killing, all the slaughtering of the cows, that's terrible. Abortions, killing all the children in the womb. All the liquor, fact, the, the breweries, the liquor shops. All of these things, so much more of ignorance, the slaughterhouses, atom bombs, atomic bombs, nuclear power, the threat of war, one nation against another nation. These are all the dangers of the, the, the mode of passion and ignorance. So Prabhupada it's quoted here, the present human civilization is, of course, grossly misled by the modes of passion and ignorance. It's a very dangerous age and all nations should take care to provide the easiest process, Krishna consciousness, to save humanity from the greatest danger. Prabhupada said, all nations should take care. It doesn't happen like that. Prabhupada appreciated Western countries that at least they gave him the chance to come there and to introduce Krishna consciousness. But not every nation welcomed Prabhupada. There were some places Prabhupada went, he was not allowed. He was refused in the airport. He had to go back. You, we have countries like that. Atheistic demoniac countries, they don't want, they don't want to learn about God consciousness. They just want to know how much money you're going to bring, how much business are you going to bring us. If you're going to build a casino, if you're going to build a hotel, they, they welcome you. But if you're coming to open a temple, oh no, don't come here, we don't want you. This is the Kali Yuga, you see. So Krishna Consciousness meant to save people from this, these modes, passion and ignorance. But people don't want to be saved. And so, speaking about the importance of education for developing the mode of goodness, cultivating the mode of goodness, Education, to, sometimes uh, one devotee described, he said, he said, I think I have to join the Krishna Consciousness Movement again. He said, when I first joined the Krishna Consciousness Movement, I gave away everything and I came and lived in the Krishna Conscious Temple. I, I gave away all my, all my books and all my music and all my, all my uh, paraphernalia for material life. I just got rid of it. I thought, I'm going to become a devotee. I don't need all these things anymore. <laughs> and so sometimes we have to rejoin the Krishna Consciousness Movement. Because some, in the course of time we collect, over collecting so many things. We have so many unnecessary items. It's not conducive for the mode of goodness. The mode of goodness. Prabhupada explains, because people have no education in actual knowledge, they become irresponsible. To stop this irresponsibility, education for developing the mode of goodness of the people in general must be there. How can we educate people in the mode of goodness? Any suggestions? We have, to, we have to show them the good example. Srila Prabhupada was a, a very wonderful example of the mode of goodness. That's why Prabhupada is the founder Acharya. He, show, he taught a perfect example of the mode of goodness. A regulated lifestyle, 
very clean, very pure. perfectly controlled in his sense activities. So that's a one way in which one can be educated, simply by seeing the perfect example. We say, action speaks louder than words. If you simply tell people, oh, you're in the mode of passion, you're in the mode of ignorance, it's not so good. But if you can actually show them the example of the mode of goodness, that's the best thing. People need to see, they need to see the example. And the Krishna consciousness movement is meant for that. We're meant to show the example, how to cultivate the mode of goodness. Srila Prabhupada explains this point further in the 14th chapter, sloka number 17. Even if the majority of the people aren't happy and prosperous, if a certain percentage of the population develop Krishna consciousness and become situated in the mode of goodness, then there is the possibility for peace and prosperity all over the world. So all over the world, just, just a, a small percentage, a certain percentage, if they just become Krishna conscious, it can make such a difference. Prabhupada talked about, he said, the, the, the snowball principle, the snowball, you make a little ball of snow and then you roll it, it gets bigger, it gets bigger, you keep rolling it, it becomes a big ball. So this is the idea, Krishna consciousness. Just get a beginning, you just get a few people and gradually it grows. More and more people become Krishna conscious. So this is how to benefit the world. Educate people in the mode of goodness. They may not be so devoted to Krishna, but somehow impress upon them the importance of the mode of goodness and getting free of the passion and the ignorance. It means getting free of the lust and the anger and the greed and the hankering, these things. All right? So, oh. <laughs> okay, so this is what we covered t this evening. We, we looked at, we had an overview, 13 and 14. We've gone through chapter 14 here tonight. We talked about the entanglement of the living entity in the modes. And we reviewed the conditioning of the modes on the living entity also. And how to transcend the modes. How to transcend the modes. Simply by engagement in devotional service. Very simple, very natural. If you want to get free of the modes of nature, just simply take up devotional service. Chant Hare Krishna, read the Bhagavad Gita, get out your Bhagavad Gita, get rid of all the maya, turn off the, all the other things. <laughs> we had a, a brief look at how we're influenced by passion and ignorance passion and ignorance, certainly very easy to become passionate and also easy because it's the nature of the modes that there's always competition. One may be in the mode of goodness, but the mode of passion can conquer. If we're not completely free of passion and ignorance, then a little bit of passion can come and overtake us, take us out of the mode of goodness. So passion, sometimes ignorance can conquer even goodness. We have to be situated in the mode of pure goodness. Therefore, we spoke about practical ways we can develop the mode of goodness. Practical ways we can be, we, we want to be regulated in our lifestyle. We want to ideally have a good morning program, do chanting, read the scriptures. 
We want to take Krishna prasadam, better to avoid outside food, just try to eat food cooked by devotees and offered to Krishna, these kind of things. And just at the end here, we did have some statements from Prabhupada's purport which reflect his mission. How if even a few people, a, a percentage of people, if just a small percentage become devotees, then they can change the world. It can have that effect. This was Prabhupada's mood and mission, to give Krishna consciousness. Just some, a few people. A final quote from the first verse of the 14th chapter. By understanding this knowledge, various great sages attained perfection and transferred to the spiritual world. The Lord now explains the same knowledge in a better way. This knowledge is far, far superior to all other processes of knowledge thus far explained. And knowing this, many attain perfection. Thus it is expected that one who understands this 14th chapter will attain perfection. So sometimes people are puzzled by this because Prabhupada is saying this knowledge is superior to all other processes of knowledge. And so we already had Bhagavad, we had the Radhavidya and we had the most confidential knowledge. So is this, is this knowledge superior to that? Well, this is special knowledge. This is knowledge of the relationship between the jiva and the prakriti. So it's different from that knowledge which, come, which came in the ninth chapter. The twelfth chapter was devotional service. This is knowledge about the, the, the jiva and his interactions with material nature. So it's the best of that knowledge. All right, we'll ask if there are any questions. Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna, please accept my obeisances. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, um, I, I would like to ask Maharaj, can a Jiva also overcome the influence of the three modes that leads to the level of Anandamaya stage? Can the Jiva overcome the, the three modes? And attain the Anand, Anandamaya stage? Yes. Yes, he can. That was described in the 13th chapter, that the jiva can. He can overcome the three modes and he can come to the level of Anandamaya by engaging in devotional service. Yes, okay, I understood that he can reach only Vigyanmaya, but he can cross that also. Well, he, he's already Vigyanmaya. But when, he be, when, he become, when he's fully engaged in pure devotional service, then he becomes Anandamaya. He's connected with Krishna. Yes, Maharaj. I understand. But one more thing, Maharaj, sorry. Yes. Uh, Maharaj, how, how are we in Vijayanmaya uh, in this bounded material condition situation? How are we? Well, because we, we understand we are a soul, we have appreciation that we are a soul. We know we're not just simply the body. So we have to achieve that situation also. We already, you already, we already know we're not the body. We already know we're souls, right? Yes, Maharaj, theoretically, you know. And theoretically, we know. So that's Vigyan Maya. We have some level of Vigyan. Yeah. Right? Yes, 
स्वरूप कृष्ण प्रभु धन्यवाद महाराज महाराज डॉक्टर नाइन वी कीप नो अबाउट अनन्या भक्ति सो वी आल्सो न्यू अबाउट शुद्ध सत्व इस टोर मोड ऑफ गुडनेस एंड इन दिस चैप्टर वी आर एक्सपेक्टेड टू अटेन मोड ऑफ गुडनेस हाउ डू वी मूव फ्रॉम बेसिकली लाइक दिस इज अ प्लेटफॉर्म टू मूव टू टोर मोड ऑफ गुडनेस बट हाउ डू यू डू दैट while we are practicing krishna consciousness we are attaining mode of goodness how to proceed to pure mode of goodness how to progress to pure mode of goodness to the pu- to shuddha sattva smaraj oh well we have to become very uh, focused in our practice of devotional service just like the verse says mamcha yo vaya bicharena when we do a vaya bicharena bhakti that means devotional service without falling down without deviating devotional service is described in shrimad bhagavatam ahaituki apratihata that is unmotivated and uninterrupted so when our devotional service has that purity then we come to that level when we get fully f- free of the contamination of the mode of passion and ignorance means when we give up the 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 lust and the des- the hankerings and the desires and the anger and the envy when we get rid of all these bad qualities these evil characteristics when we get rid of these things from the heart and purify our heart when we come become situated fully in krishna consciousness in devotional service without any of these contaminations then that is that is pure devote that is vishuddha sattva pure goodness but so long as we're influenced with your one minute we're doing great devotional next minute we're really oh we're really in the modes we're down there you, you know in the third canto of shrimad bhagavatam it describes one may be doing devotional service but devotional service can also be in the modes of nature it can also be in goodness it can also be in passion it can also be in ignorance everything depends on the attitude remember the nectar of instruction everything depends on the attitude of the devotee what is our motive in performing our devotional service is our motive to give harm or trouble to others or is our motive to get a big name and reputation for ourselves or is our motive just to get rid of sinful reactions just to purify ourselves or is our motive for the satisfaction of krishna so there are different levels of devotion pure pure devotion means one is acting simply for the satisfaction of krishna other levels of devotion are not pure devotion they're mixed devotion so it's not yet should should asanga it's still mixed with the other qualities so we have to get rid of all these uh, anarthas they're called anarthas right the unwanted things in the heart we have to remove them to come to vishuddha sattva to come up to that level of pure devotion this is described in the second chapter of the shrimad bhagavatam and those verses are quoted in the seventh chapter of bhagavad gita the first verse the purport of the first verse of the seventh chapter you can read those verses and uh, probably quotes these verses describing how the living entity can come up he get, gets free of passion and ignorance and he comes up to the mode of goodness and he comes up to the, the level of pure goodness transcendental goodness so simply by devotional service that we simply continue we improve we become more absorbed in our hearing and chanting and we try to do it better and better 
and we try to please Krishna. Yes? Thank you so much, sir. I would like to ask how to always maintain the mode of goodness. Sometimes we, so not sometimes, often we are dominantly or predominantly uh, in, uh, influenced by the mode of passion and goodness. Even though we are in this bhakti path, it's, it's often we are influenced by mode of passion and ignorance. So how should we maintain the mode of goodness that sometimes comes to us? Simply by engaging in devotional service. When you, when, you, when you realize that you're becoming more passionate and ignorant, more influenced by the lower modes, then you have to absorb yourself more strictly in the mood of pure devotion. You have to take up the chanting of the Holy Name. You have to pick up the Bhagavad Gita and start reading it and worshipping Krishna. You want to get out of the mode of passion and ignorance? You simply engage in Krishna consciousness with a pure heart and call out to Krishna, please save me. When Prabhupada went to America, he wrote a poem and he describes in the poem, he said, most of the, po po most, practically everybody, of the people here are covered by the modes of passion and ignorance. I do not know how they will ever be able to understand the message of Vyasadeva. But I know you have some mission here, otherwise why would you have brought me here to this place? So then Prabhupada prays, please make me dance, make me dance, make me dance. And so this is one way in which you can get free of passion and ignorance. You join the Sankirtan, you go and chant and dance. Join Lord Chaitanya's Sankirtan party, have kirtan, and chant and dance. Chant and dance for the pleasure of Krishna and Guru. Not, not just for your own sake, but for the pleasure of Guru and Krishna. Take up Sankirtan, very powerful, will immediately change your consciousness. Yes? Any other questions? We have one more from Dritat Mahaprabhu. Uh -huh. So it's from Parvati Mataji and that's Nangur Maharaj. Thank you for your mercy. So in uh, deepening the knowledge of this 14th chapter, so my question is, this is in regard to the reality when I teach in the field to the people. So there are three persons that I met. So the gambler and the recidivist, you know, like the person that coming out jail and come back again. So when we are doing Sankirtan, so when we spoke to them, they can hear it and they accept this knowledge and they change themselves. So that's the second person that Mataji met. And the third is the, you know, like scientific writer. They. Uh, they would like to talk to us and they sometimes debate us but even though they are debate, debating us they accepting our knowledge and they become devotee later and the last person is the businessman so they at first 
they did not accept our knowledge. They sometimes hesitate to accept our knowledge. But when their business is failed, they try. You know, like they try to accept. They, uh, they try to accept our knowledge, and sometimes some people become devotees. Yeah. So, regarding the factor and the fact that they become devotee later, so is that the influence of their 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 goodness, their goodness quality, or is it just simply by Shri Prabhupada mercy they can become devotees so of these types of person that she she want to remember? Is it clear? Well. She's asking why did they become devotees? The reason <laughs> we can say, yes, Prabhupada's mercy, we can say also your mercy, that you, you approached them, you came to them and tried to give them Krishna consciousness by the presence of our movement there, because our movement is there and devotees are there, so they know about our movement. And this movement is a manifestation of Prabhupada's mercy, and Prabhupada's mercy is coming from Krishna, is delivering Krishna's mercy. So there are many reasons. We can say also because Krishna is in the heart of that person, so Krishna guided that person to become a devotee. Krishna has to sanction, you know, and so from the heart. Krishna arranged for the, the person to come and take up Krishna consciousness. We don't know who will be a devotee. We don't know who's quality. It's not a question of qualification. We don't know who's going to become a devotee. We give everyone the chance. We have to go everywhere, right? Give them the chance to do some service, to render some service to the devotees. Maybe they give a donation or maybe they're just friendly with a devotee. It's all for their benefit. So we, this is a business of a Krishna consciousness movement, to give, to give people that opportunity, to help them to be qualified to take up Krishna consciousness. Sometimes they just see the devotees. And just by seeing the devotees they benefit. But, but we don't know actually who's going to be a devotee. Therefore, we, we have to give Krishna consciousness to everyone. And, and for every living entity, we think how to benefit them. Right? We, we, we like to benefit the trees, let the trees hear the chanting of the holy name, the flowers, everything. They're all living entities and they need the mercy of the devotees. So we chant Hare Krishna loudly, we distribute prasadam everywhere, and we try to be friendly, make friends with people, have nice relationships. It's very important to try to keep friendly relationships to help people to come into Krishna consciousness. People should think these devotees are very nice, that's important, that people have a good image of our Krishna conscious movement, right? If we argue and fight with them, it's not very good. But if we have a nice relationship, keep friendly dealings with them, then people will think, oh yeah, Krishna con, very nice, good people, that's important. Okay? Thank you for your question. Any other question? One, one re, re hand raised. Swaroop Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Dhandavats Maharaj. Hare. Maharaj, there is a debate. You, you, I mean, I found this statement. You made Sankirtan can change consciousness pretty deep. Maharaj, there is a debate between Ajayananandis and now, I have seen in my life that deity worship helps in um, improving senses. Um, uh, and uh, Bhajananandis are more um, 
oriented towards deity worship and sadhana and all that. Personal deity worship, personal sadhana. While uh, Sankirtan movement is uh, uh, more to do with uh, um, reaching out and uh, uh, preaching and all that. So, and you have very nicely uh, said that Sankirtan movement uh, improves consciousness. Deity worship also improves consciousness. And question number two is, for us in ISKCON, in, in where La Prabhupada is uh, giving us instruction and direction, what should be our mood? Yes, well, we, we take an interest in both, both Pancharatriki and uh, Bhagavata Vidhi. Pancharatriki is a deity worship and Bhagavata Vidhi is the path of preaching. So both are, both are there. They're both parts of the Krishna consciousness movement. Yes, deity worship. Deity worship is important for us to keep us regulated and pure in our habits. But preaching is also important to keep us in the in awareness of the, the misery and the suffering which is there in the world and to have compassion for other people. Because if we just stay in the temple and worship the deity all day, we may forget about how much suffering is there in the world. So Krishna appreciates those people who take up, who have the compassion and who have uh, the, the feelings for others and want to give help and try to deliver other people. So both paths are important. And Devotees who are doing preaching work, they need to also worship the deity. In the same way people who are doing deity worship, sometimes they also need to go out for sankirtan, and they need to take part in preaching. These things, so both, both are important. And Prabhupada, you see Prabhupada has both installed deities, and he also had sankirtan. He wanted sankirtan, book distribution. So we, we cannot neglect this, the other, you have to, we have to do both, right? Hare Krishna Maharaj, sequel to this uh, question asks, I'm uh, wanting to know is deity worship in ISKCON not also preaching because from some experience I have, one friend of mine in the UK, he took a, a lady devotee to the temple, the Soho, Soho temple. The lady has never come in contact with devotees before. He doesn't know anything about deities. But when she got to the temple and saw the deities, she exclaimed, Wow, they look beautiful. Is that not a symptom of preaching? And in Chopati, here in Mumbai, a lot of tourist buses come on a daily basis before the lockdown to take darshan of the deities. Is that not also preaching? So if we think that we are doing deity worship and we are not preaching, are we not being a little bit narrow in our understanding? No, I agree. Deity worship is also preaching, but the, it's, it, it's, you know, it's a different kind of preaching from going out into the public into the public, going out there and actually delivering the message of the Bhagavatam and presenting the philosophy to people. Deity worship is, you know, that is also preaching, but we, gener that we do that in our temple. We're in our own home, we're in our temple there and we're doing, dressing the deities. It is preaching. I said it's also important, but I said the tendency is that we forget about how much suffering is going on outside. 
that we can forget about what is the nature of the material world and how much there's a need to preach Krishna consciousness. How many people come to the temple and how many people are out there on the street? You say people come to the temple in Chalpati before lockdown, but there's a, a lot more people out there on the street. There's many, many more people who don't come you get, a small, you get a, a small percentage of the people coming there to the temple for darshan. But we've got to go out to the temple. Prabhupada said, our temples are not just for us to eat and sleep. He said, they're a base for our army to go out and fight Maya. So Prabhupada wanted us to go out. He didn't like us to just sit around the temple. He wanted us going out to meet the people, to make programs and to preach to them, right? This is, uh, this is Lord Chaitanya's movement. Lord Chaitanya, of course, he told the Goswamis, go to Vrindavan, he told them, build temples, show the people how to worship the deity. Very good. Yeah, he wanted it. Lord Chaitanya wanted that. But he also wanted Sankirtan. He also wanted the preaching. He sent Nityananda and Haridas door to door to tell people to chant. And what did he tell them to do? He told them, Bolo Krishna, Bajo Krishna, Koro Krishna Shiksha. Bol, chant the name of Krishna, worship Krishna, and read the books about Krishna. Right? So, like that, not only worship the deity, that's one part of it, but also read the books about Krishna and chant the name of Krishna. So both, path, both paths are important. We don't, we don't see just only Pancharatriki. Some, some of people, are, they just do that. Some Vaishnavas, they just worship the deity. But we're also Bhagavata Vidhi, not only Pancharatriki. Bhagavad Vidya is also an important part, to go out and do preaching work. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Thank you, Prabhu. Any other question, Prabhu? Yes, yes, Maharaj, one hand is raised. Okay. Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. I have a very small question, Maharaj. In text number 3, 14.3, Krishna is saying the material substance to be Brahman. So, do we call material uh, nature also Brahman? I just wanted to. Yes. Yes, we, we read that. It's stated like that. In the 13th chapter, it was mentioned like that. That material nature can, is also Brahman. Okay, although it's dead still. Body of Brahman, but it originated from the Lord. Yes, right. Okay, thank you. The material nature is also eternal, but it's Brahman. Yes. Okay, any other questions? Ganga Prasad Prabhu, you have another question, your hand was raised. I forgot to lower it. I've lowered it now. Oh, oh, oh it's okay. So, okay, Maharaj, so there is no hand raised. Uh, All right. So then we'll finish here tonight. And tomorrow we'll continue. We'll go on to chapter 15 tomorrow. Okay, Maharaj. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Go back to Vrinda Ki. Haribo. Krishna. Uh -huh.